Great. Um, Pauline, welcome. I'm so glad you can join uh, Expo North Digital Shorts from your living room. My living room, yes. <laughs> I've got a bit of a cold, so uh, sorry about that. We're so excited to have you here. I'm a fan of your work. Um, can you please tell our audience a little bit about what you do, who you are and what you do? Okay, um, I'm a, a radio producer. Have been. I was a radio reporter for about 10 years and then so, so switched to radio producing and report. I do some reporting now. So about 30 years experience of radio uh, in Northern Ireland and in Scotland and some in America, just bits of pieces of recording. Uh, so I've been, my background is in news mainly and documentary making, um, sort of short documentaries or longer series as well. And more recently, I've been freelance. I was working for the BBC in Northern Ireland, working for the BBC in Scotland. And for about the last eight years now, I think it is, I've been freelance. And it's funny going freelance because um, I've gone back to doing what I used to do when I started in the industry, which was freelancing and doing anything, you know, packs, um, features, making features, covering council meetings, which I don't do now. But um, more recently then it's become sort of podcasts and all that create because there is an, an when I was training in radio journalism which is what I trained in uh very specific not news journalism not tv just radio and uh, but I'm going back nearly 30 years when they did such things and uh we were taught then how to sort of make a feature how to the elements of making a documentary and telling a story either in a short way or a longer way and for different outlets and i always remember the person that that um was teaching us that ted grundy i think it's ted grundy uh and and from bbc falmouth and he said learn this because this will stand by you and it has um you know that that art of being able to tell a story and craft it with other voices and put in sound and using sound has you know that's what has stood by me so can i ask why sound for you before we get into the art of storytelling why sound for you gosh that's an interesting one i think it's just in the way that maybe a painter sees mm -hmm. color or sees pictures or you know i i just hear things i so when you're walking around, even, I mean, I'm, I like walking quite a bit and sometimes I'll listen. I mean, there's a good chance to listen to things now, which you couldn't do a few years ago. But sometimes it's just quite good to just not be listening to anything and just sort of walk around and hear, you know, what's going around you and what conversations are taking place. Or um, if you're on public transport, just watching and listening. But yeah, quite often I would just close my eyes and listen to, to what I hear and see how that works and sometimes I'll sneakily record things as well. <laughs> well, you, well you, uh -oh. um, you know the, I have to say in our chats you are a superstar listener so you have this ability more than anybody else I've chatted to to kind of pick up on things and then bring them back into another conversation so that makes sense to me. That All right okay. <laughs> so can we talk a little bit you're someone who has straddled between radio and actually coming up in the kind of traditional BBC training radio way and then moved over to podcasts. So I'm so curious about the storytelling in both. Are, mm -hmm. Do you approach both the same? Are they actually totally different mediums? How does that work? They are, the sort of elements of storytelling are the same. I think the big difference between doing something for radio and doing something for a podcast is that you, you don't have, there's, there's, and the, li the limits aren't the same so you're a bit freer with time in a podcast so whereas you're making a, a radio documentary for instance I mean I've made radio documentary I made one-offs I've made a series of four sometimes but you, you've got a certain amount of time 28 minutes and 30 seconds so and within that you've got to get different voices you know you've got to cover different angles on a story and things but whereas with a podcast or a podcast series, you can afford to give something the amount of time you think it deserves. And it's just a bit freer, it's a bit more relaxed. Um, I mean, for the people maybe being interviewed, it is just the same as if they were doing it for a radio or for, but it, it allows you to let things breathe. It allows you to go down certain little angles that maybe would get lost in an edit later if you were doing a radio program now don't get me wrong i still think you know, there's a lot of editing needs to be done in podcasts and 
I'm editing, I've been editing quite a few recently and I still have the same ear for editing it that I would a radio program in that, you know, tidying things up or people are repeating themselves or maybe something would work in a different order. So I still do that, but not, you know, if you decide when you're finished it, do you know what? This bit doesn't fit in this episode. You can take it out. Um, so you were, you were saying there's the difference between the podcast where you can go on tangents, but you still really need to edit. And you were saying you've been editing a lot of podcasts currently quite, yes. quite a lot. Uh, yes. Um, and I was wondering, do you find, because you can be a little bit more experimental with podcasts, do you find yourself discovering new storytelling techniques that are exciting you at the moment? Things that you can do either with time or sound that you hadn't been able to do for the BBC radio? Yes, I have found that. I worked on a, it was within the last year, I did a true crime series for BBC uh, Sounds, BBC Scotland. And in one of the episodes, I let the sound, it was, it was somebody was reflecting, it was the last episode and they were reflecting on the whole story mm-hmm. and going back to where the scene of the crime was. And we were on different modes of transport. So the train, the tube, uh, I think it was mainly the train and the tube. And we just, so I let that, I recorded that and that was almost to the foreground and the narration, which was quite long and quite reflective, something you wouldn't do so much on radio, was sort of quietly behind that, you know, but, you know, you just got the, the change of pace and the, the getting to where you were going and summing up what we'd heard so far, but quite under the, the, the soundtrack sort of led that. Um, also, uh, use of music. Um, because in podcasts you're quite restricted in what you can use in music so you know public domain becomes your best friend um or if you find some friendly person who's a composer and works with you which is happening at the minute with another podcast which is very good uh so yes i find that actually i like that i like being out when i'm recording i like i'm not i i I prefer being out in in the field and recording a lot of stuff. You know, yes, you do have to record in studio, but I like to have that sound of where you are. And but that yes, I would use that in radio as well, but maybe a lot freer and a lot more time to do it in a podcast. Well, how do you find um, the world of podcasting in Scotland at the moment? Is it a exciting field to be in? Is it growing? Is it kind of slower than other countries that you've seen? What do you think? It's catching up. It's catching up. Um, there's a few uh, quite exciting things have happened. Um, I've, done, I've been involved in a couple of podcasts, very different ones for Radio Scotland. I've just um, just finished uh, From Home, which was quite challenging. Uh, the Alex Salmond uh, trial podcast, um, which I started when we were still in the building. I was in the building working with that. Um, and that was just the... the BBC lawyer and a reporter who was tweeting on the case every day, getting together at the end of the day and recording. You know, it has so many legal pitfalls and things, but you can't have somebody better there than the BBC lawyer who actually wrote the book about Scots law for journalists. So, uh, yeah, Rose McInnes. I mean, she'd never put, she'd never broad, she doesn't broadcast very much, so it was all new to her. But you could tell over the different days how she was getting more comfortable with it, and how, and it's amazing something like even a, a court case like that, which in one hand was quite dry and quite explaining legal processes in Scotland, but there was a story, and the story was it was just that picking out the story and the, how it developed over the different days and the different sides to the story so in a way it was just classic storytelling as well as explaining how the system works um and so that was yeah that was that was something that was quite new that they could see in a newsroom how you could do something as it's been done with brexit it's been done with um, coronavirus as well but in scotland it's quite this is quite new they've got political which they do but also um another um Exciting, very exciting adventure is uh, the Big Light, which is a company that was set up um, quite recently uh, by Janice Forsyth, who is a arts bro- she's an arts broadcaster in BBC Radio Scotland, and uh, a colleague of hers, Fiona White, who comes from a production background from STV, and they've set up this company uh, looking at Scottish a Scottish voice uh, podcast, and they've they've been. I mean, it's, it's interesting having 
worked with them for a while and seeing how long it takes and to set up a company and to, to think about how you start a podcast from scratch, how you've got to think of things like raising the funding, how you've got to get the right voices on it and get the format. Um, and we're just working. They've got, they've got several now. They've got uh, med- uh, talk media. Yeah, talk media. Um, Stuart Cosgrove and Eamon O'Neill, who were in the BBC doing a media review, but that was schedule changes and that was stopped. So they went to the podcast format, which is quite different. Quite Ollie, different. Can, I, can I ask for the layman, which is definitely me? I love podcasts and it's a mystery to me about how they're made. Um, what is a budget? When you said for, for someone who actually wants to create their own podcast, I know they could probably do it with their own kit from home but if you wanted yeah. to do like a traditionally done podcast what would the what what does a budget sort of a high-end sort yeah. of high-end production values well you'd have to have i mean they've got a studio uh which they use one in their it's it's, it's sort of run by uh fiona it's in fiona's house <laughs> and her partner is a musician so he is a sound engineer as well. I mean, this is, and so they have high quality microphones, high quality sound, but yes, you can do it. You can do it like this talking. You can, you know, it's not this, but this is a, this is a high end one. But so you, if you want to get a producer and a presenter and contributors, um, they need paid. And, uh, you know, it, it is that one of those things that um, people think podcasting, when they ask you to do work, I've been asked by some people, approached by some people to say, could you produce a podcast for me? Can you tell me what your rate is? And I tell them and then I don't hear from them again. <laughs> <laughs> because it is, I mean, it, it is a, you, yes, people, anyone can do it. But if you want proper editing and you want it mixed and you want that high production value, there is a cost. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think more and more people are doing it, which is great. You know, I think it's a great, I, I love hearing it. And some people just are like, come to it, they're like ducks to water and they find that they can edit and they can, they know how to tell a story, you know, how to do interviews and that, that's really, really good. Um, so you don't have to have that. You know, I don't think you, you can just sort of, I'm thinking of Sean McDonald, who's a Scottish podcaster. And he has a podcast called Blethered, which he lives in. He went from Scotland to live in Catalonia, the Barcelona in Catalonia, and he just started talking to people in in cafes and you know recording the conversations. He has a phenomenal following, and he's just come into the big light sort of house now as well. So, I mean, what the big light is is almost like a. Uh, in a way like a publishing company or like a, a banner under which different people can bring ideas and things to 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 make podcasts so it's at the very beginning stages so for before we go into one of your projects which i want to talk about remote working especially during the coronavirus as we're all kind of housebound and because i think it's so fascinating how you continue to do your work um what advice would you give folks uh, who have a podcast idea about how to get started do you think they should approach a podcast company with a pitch? Do you think they should do a little bit themselves, like some recordings? What, how, how would, how, what advice would you give? I would say listen to lots of podcasts. So if you've got an idea for a podcast, the first thing I would do is go and see if somebody's made it already. Or, um, and listen to lots of different podcasts and listen to ones that are quite similar to what you're thinking of. Mm-hmm. And also look for a unique if you're wanting to present it yourself, look for the thing that means you would stand out doing it than other people. Because okay. it's, quite, it's quite busy and it's quite crowded. Um, but if you have a, an idea, but you've got personal experience or a personal thing to bring to it. I've just been listening to um, Murder Most File. It's the storyteller, Isla Tricker, who, um, she's, I mean, she's a well-known sort of, journalist um tv presenter but she had this idea of going back to to look at a a murder she covered when she was in her 20s in aberdeen and it's fantastic it was a lovely lovely um podcast really well done but she did it all herself she 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 funded it she did all the interviews she did the editing she you know she had skills to bring to it but you know she made it so it was sometimes you just have to to take that risk and go and make something and then try and get attention for it and if it's really good it'll stand out 
Um, in terms of equipment and things, I mean, you can record on your phone. You can record, you can do that quite, it's worth probably having a look around. I, mean, I use a, a Zoom recorder most of the time, which I've had but two, I've got a spare one <laughs> just in case. But um, it's a bit more expensive, but it's good for what I want to do. It's very good for filming outside and filming in different locations. Um, so, you, you know, you just do your homework, but also write, write your idea down, re say it out loud and think about, is it something that you're just going to tell a story yourself? Or are you going to bring in other voices to help you tell that story? And then that involves researching it. And so, you know, those, those are kinds of things, but you can do it. You, I would, I would advise anyone who has an idea and just wants to see how it would work is just treat it like a project and, that's, and great, that's great that's great advice and Pauline I know we're running out of time so I do really want to quickly ask you about um the remote working that you're doing in the new podcast okay. underway to give us a little sneak peek <laughs> okay well I'm, I'm producing a podcast called the Tartan Noir Show which is a new Scottish uh, crime writing podcast that launches on the 1st of April Yay. so and it's um, it's again under the big lights uh, and Janice Forsyth has carried out lots of interviews um, at the various book festivals you know Bloody Scotland and the Edinburgh Book Festival and things uh, where she's talked to crime writers so that's part of it but uh, it's been it's a sort of magazine format it's got clips it's got readings it's got our first guest is Val McDermott cool. talking about Laidlaw, one of the books that influenced her writing. And we have, as a bonus for that, an interview with Liam McIlvany, um, William McIlvany's son, uh, who wrote Laidlaw. So it's quite, there's a lot in it. There's a lot of, and it's sort of got some, almost like seven, I've been working on it this morning, seven parts to the program, which will last about 45 minutes. But the thing is, we had this studio and the idea was everybody would come to the studio and we'd have a bit of a chat and people would be face to face. But now we've got, um, to, uh, we've got Therese Talbot, who's the presenter, possibly doing it from home. Maybe on a system that's set up in the studio or maybe with my recorder so that she would have to listen on her phone and record into that to get the quality sound. Val McDermott is, um, she's going to be on her phone record, you know, doing it on WhatsApp or Zoom or Skype or something. And the, I've recorded, I've got the, the, the author is um, Craig Russell, was reading extracts from his book, that's the book. So he just recorded it on his phone and sent it to me. So, you know, we've got all those different elements. We're trying to have meetings and emails. The, the flow of emails is just, you get confused because they all build up. So this morning I've just been working out how we can set it up in Google Drive just so that there's one document and everybody can chip in. So workflow, I think, is probably, and I think that's probably for all podcasts, but especially now is just being able to know who's doing what when you can't see them, when you can't meet up for a cup of coffee and say, like, well, we'll have a half hour chat about this. When you're trying it's, it's one thing to have like um to have to pull threads of a story together and it's yeah. another thing now that you have a distributed creative process because i just want to make clear because maybe when people are watching this we'll be able to leave the house again just because of the current situation yeah. with the coronavirus yeah. so but it's amazing that you're still able to figure out a workflow and a production yeah. schedule and get this story together that's yeah. pretty awesome Right, I'll have a check in on the first of April. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to listen. I'm so excited to listen to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Pauline, before we go, you've been such a so great, and there's so many more things I want to ask you, but I've been promised to keep these close to at least 15 minutes. Um, what is one of the tricks you use in terms of jump starting creativity or a have to in your own kind of practice to keep the flow of content coming and to keep you? on your toes? Uh, I would say um, walking for me is quite a good one. So I could be, you know, cause sometimes you can be in a long edit or you can, and you've got to be creative and you've got to think of a different way and how voices work together. It's just to walk away from it sometimes, you know, just give yourself time. If you've got something, uh, something to do. I mean, I've heard people say, but you could pull together a half hour documentary in a day. Yes, you could. You could, if you really had to, but, 
it's just letting it sit, give yourself time to do all the sort of the, the editing and the getting it and thinking, and then leave it for a while. It's like, you know, let it ferment, let it just, and just let it work in your brain while you're doing other things, cooking, <laughs> walking. Sometimes I'll just go for, you know, walk away from it and build in times when I just go for a walk around the block a couple of times and just, and something will occur to you, something will click. Um, so that for me is just to take time, it takes time. And, and sometimes it can feel that I'm not getting anywhere with this. I'm not getting it. It's not, but then you'll wake up at two in the morning and you'll submit, that's how I'm going to do it. You know, so it's allowing yourself to have that time to come back to it and come back to it. That's that's brilliant advice. Thank you so much, Pauline. And thank you for joining Expo North okay. Digital Shorts. I'm going to try to convince you to stay on for five more minutes off recording so we can geek out about podcasts. But okay. thank you, thank you okay. very much for joining no us.